It's amazing watch more in details. I promise you that uh, we'll present you World Premiere during these three days together, and we'll begin with this one. What do you see on this uh, on uh, on this uh, on this ch on this screen? What you see here for the first the on time. You all know that in geometry we always have uh, the time set on one part of the watch. The time is here on the same position than with the quantum lunar uh, chronograph at this time the other the other position. Then uh, what you discover that the world time it is represented here mm -hmm. with a globe. It's a three-dimensional globe. Mm -hmm. Uh, that you will uh, that you will discover on the watch. Of course, you can read the time indication around. And you have the second time zone that lives for itself in this indication, with a jumping hour indication and a minute. And that minute is, of course, as I said, I would say independent from the other time of hour and minute of the other side. And uh, with your dual wing system, for sure. We could manage to have, I would say, this independency, and on top of that, and you will see to have a neutral, I would say, a very good, uh, I would say, performance in terms of chronometer with uh, 50 hours of power reserve of, uh, of the watch itself. Two push button, one to move the hour uh, up from one time zone, and another to go backward uh, to do backward. So if you push here, we'll go forward. If we push there, we could go backward. I would say that's never been done before. Inside, uh, we have been working on a new calibers called uh, the 383. Uh, that's for sure built under the same principle of the dual wing. You know that the dual wing construction is coming uh, as deep roots in the Vallée de Joux in the 90th century of uh, of this Vallée de Joux, and. Uh, what will be again, I would say, uh, something amazing with the geometer line. Uh, that uh, all the settings, all these time zone uh, uh, move change uh, from the minute to uh, the hours will have no impact at all on the chronometer performance of the watch itself. As we said, uh, the club of the, of, uh, of the watches uh, that can be set to the minute is a very tiny club. But the word time that can be set for the minute is not a club. There is only one unique <laughs> example, that's this one. Set that and you will discover how the watch is functioning. We have been working out so that, I would say the complexity is inside the movement. This movement is three, uh, it's 498 parts, so that the way of adjusting the time zone and adjusting hour and minute, I would say, uh, is I would say a child, I would say a child game. This amazing pole are in this amazing uh, three-dimensional uh, uh, representation of, uh, of the world. Uh, that's where I would say we have the opportunity to see the different, what, uh, the different time zone. And instead we have two, I would say, gear trains, and in somehow two separate watch mechanisms in one single movement in, the, uh, in this uh, geometer. Uh, one gear train and one mechanism is dedicated to display, display the home time and to keep the accuracy and the perfect accuracy of the, uh, of the home time. While the second uh, gear train and the second power reserve is completely dedicated to indicate <coughs> the second time zone to make the hour jumping, uh, the, hour jumping uh, the hour and having uh, the system for the second time zone not creating any interference and not consuming, I would say, energy. Uh, for the watch. You know that there are many times for this multi -time, multiple time zone, one of the big, I would say, problems that we meet is, I would say, during the last half of uh, the power reserve, that the watch is losing a lot of its accuracy because all this system of, uh, I would say, for sure, I would say, a big impact on the, on the system itself. As said, at 6 o'clock, you have this amazing uh, display that's uh, representing the world map represented, I would say, and surrounding by uh, the time indication. And of course, the globe is synchronized with the travel time that you have seen on the side of the side of this watch. If you pay attention uh, to, the, uh, to the time indication, you will see that uh, uh, there is a day and night indicator. It shows you if, I would say, uh, 
in the part of the world you are, if you are, uh, I would say, in the first 12 hours or if you are in the second 12 hours of the day. Let's have a look on the... Ah, non, pas Let's have a look on the, on the movement itself. Uh, here, what is very interesting to see is that you recognize a traditional um, construction of uh, our geometer with the two barrels, with these two sources of energy. These two barrels give 50 hours of power reserve for each, uh, for each function. So uh, we have again, I would say, a rich, a perfect, I would say, we reach, thanks to that, again, a perfect chronometer a performance uh, for the watch itself. And you saw uh, on the dial of the watches previously a very nice and very, I would say, uh, watchmaking uh, seconds end that is definitely uh, showing you very nicely the precision, indicating you very nicely uh, the, um, the precision of the watch. Uh, and of course, uh, like with the geometer, uh, you will be winding the two barrels when you wind clockwise and anti-clockwise. Same system, so uh, uh, with, the same, uh, with the same move that, uh, that you can do when you wind the watch, the watch itself. So let's go. Uh, uh, Stefan uh, and Thomas will, uh, in a few minutes, uh, show you the watch in the, in the boutique so that you can have the watch on your wrist, so that you can see how everything turns. Because I promise you, when you adjust the time zone and you see this three dimensional globe turning on itself, that's an amazing uh, aesthetical uh, impression that you create. And uh, again, it takes all the complexity of fine watchmaking in a very, uh, uh, in a very nice uh, proximity and uh, it creates, I would say, a strong willingness to, uh, to use it. But let's imagine, before you 